as an alter personality. Only 20% of the general population is easily hypnotizable, but trauma at an early age makes people vulnerable to dissociation and thus easily hypnotizable. Typically, the programmer might wear a costume, such as a rabbit suit, and sacrifice a rabbit in front of the child victims before they are physically traumatized. The image of the rabbit, a phrase from Alice in Wonderland, or similar paired images are used as the triggers to call forth the alter personality. The method works best when the trauma is repeated around six years of age. A few years later, the child victim's IQ tests and personality tests are evaluated to determine whether the child may be trained in assassination, sexual blackmail, drug courier, or other role. The subject can be hypnotized and used for operations, but we would only be consciously aware of the sense of lost time. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb employed these early programmers and concentrated on the use of LSD for mind control and exotic poisons and drugs for political assassinations. He personally gave LSD to an unknowing fellow scientist, Dr. Frank Olson, who worked for the Army Chemical Corps Special Operations Division at Fort Detrick. His job was developing biological weapons. Dr. Olson committed suicide by jumping through the window of a 10th floor hotel. Dr. Gottlieb concealed his actions and the Olson family was unaware of the cause of his suicide until 27 years later when the facts emerged during a congressional hearing on CIA abuses. The link between Gottlieb and Olson illustrates how the different elements of biological and chemical weapons, radiation testing, and MK Ultra were all intertwined. Dr. Ewan Cameron was president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations. He ran the Allen Memorial Institute, which was founded in 1943 with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation. Nazi paperclip scientists made their way into the CIA and military-sponsored mind control programs here in the United States and Canada. Some of these scientists were friends of Dr. Cameron. Money for Cameron's operation came from the CIA and was funneled through the Cornell Society for the Investigation of Human Ecology. The systematic annihilation or depatterning of a subject's mind and memory was accomplished with overdoses of LSD, barbiturate sleep for 65 days at a time, and electroshock therapy at 75 times the recommended dosage. Psychic driving, the repetition of a recorded message for 24 hours a day, programmed the emptied mind. The Canadian government settled a class action lawsuit by 250 former patients of Dr. Cameron decades later, but no person or institution has ever been disciplined or punished for these activities. Cameron was the premier psychiatrist of the 20th century. He had studied Nazi scientists at the Nuremberg trials and later replicated many of their methods and sought their assistance in the race to control the human mind. Cameron's mind control experiments were one program out of many run by the CIA, Navy, Air Force, Army, and others. Richard Helms ran the Dirty Tricks Department after the Bay of Pigs and became Director of Central Intelligence in 1966. He destroyed the archive on MKUltra when he left in 1972 and successfully covered up the crimes of MKUltra. Helms, like Gottlieb, was a Machiavellian character who used paperclip scientists and would stop at nothing to win. He advocated low-intensity warfare, transmitting strategic subliminal messages to the brains of enemy populations and the use of high frequencies to affect memory and the unconscious mind. In 1964, he wrote a memo to the Warren Commission where he mentions biological radio communication. Quote, Cybernetics can be used in molding of a child's character, the inculcation of knowledge and techniques, the amassing of experience, 
the establishment of social behavior patterns, all functions which can be summarized as control of the growth processes of the individual. In 1953, MKUltra relied on LSD, but by the 1960s the emphasis had changed to biological radio communication. MKUltra had 149 sub-projects that encompassed nearly every aspect of human behavior and social science. In the 1977 Senate hearings, former CIA Director Admiral Stansfield Turner stated that the program took place at 80 institutions, including 44 universities, 15 private companies, 12 hospitals, and 3 prisons. MKUltra Subproject 119 was the foundation of all non-lethal weapons programs currently active and included a summary of five areas, one of which is entitled Techniques of Activation of the Human Organism by Remote Electronic Means. This memo was dated August 17, 1960, and when viewed with other evidence that was not destroyed, shows significant interest in radio frequency weapons and direct control of human behavior at a distance. By 1960, the CIA dropped emphasis on the use of LSD in favor of electronic influence. This aspect of the research is where the greatest modern emphasis has been, rather than chemical or biological agents, both of which violate existing treaties and leave physical traces. In 1962, a CIA manual focused on radio hypnotic intracerebral control, RHIC, which was developed by the Pentagon. Quote, when a part of your brain receives a tiny electrical impulse from outside sources, such as vision, hearing, etc., an emotion is produced. Anger at the sight of a gang of boys beating an old woman, for example. The same emotions of anger can be created by artificial radio signals sent to your brain by a controller. You could instantly feel the same white-hot anger without any apparent reason." Unquote. Another term, electronic dissolution of memory, EDOM, refers to the ability to erase memory at a distance. I'm Chris Di Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. I was a subject from 1966 to 1976. Dr. Green performed radiation experiments on me in 1970, focusing on my neck, throat, and chest. 1972 focusing on my chest and my uterus in 1975. Each time I became dizzy, nauseous, and threw up. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green was using me mostly as a mind control subject from 1966 to 1973. His objective was to gain control of my mind and train me to be a spy assassin. I was in what looked like a laboratory and there seemed to be other children. I was strapped down, naked, spread eagle, on a table, on my back. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper, deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. I felt drugged because he had given me a shot before he started the procedure. When it was over, he gave me another shot. The next thing I remember, I was with my grandparents again in Tucson, Arizona. I was four years old. You can see from this experiment that Dr. Green used trauma, drugs, post-hypnotic suggestion, and more trauma in an effort to gain total control of my mind. 
He used me in radiation experiments both for the purposes of determining 